Let's move into main topic number five. And our fifth main topic today gets submitted to us by Darren Friesen. And Darren Friesen writes, Hey, John and crew. I remember you saying you weren't going to get excited anymore about any release dates until they're actually about to open because you just don't trust their ability to hold those dates with the pandemic. Well, not only has Morbius been moved, I'm seeing stories that No Time to Die is about to be moved off its April 2nd date. Are we ever, are we ever going to see this movie? All right, thanks a lot for writing that in, Darren. And yeah, man, well, listen, one of the movies... We have been very excited to see, obviously, is James Bond, No Time to Die. We've been waiting very patiently for this movie for a while. It obviously got bumped, moved into April. We heard just recently Morbius was going to be moving. And now it looks like, according to a pretty reliable source over at Deadline, that we're probably also going to see James Bond, No Time to Die, move again. This comes to us from the folks at Deadline who write, In what should not be a shocker, we are hearing that MGM slash Eon's No Time to Die is bound to move from its Easter weekend release date of April 2nd to sometime in the fall, as the world awaits for the pandemic to come under control. Several sources inform us this morning. Uh, note, the UK is a key market in No Time to Die's rollout, and they are facing a similar situation as the US. They don't know exactly when exhibition will be fully back up and running. So that comes to us from the folks over at Deadline. Now, look, it's hard to talk about this without also bringing up the situation with Morbius because the situation with Morbius was very, very similar. We had Morbius that was supposed to come out in just a couple of months here, but the reality is that it's going to take a little bit for them to roll out these vaccinations. Like even if, even if under the best possible outcomes and the most optimistic forecasts, let's say, you know, the new presidential administration is about to come in. Joe Biden says they're going to have 100 million vaccinations or their goal is going to have 100 million vaccinations in the first 100 days. OK, even if they're able to do that, and that's an if, you know, March and April are still a little too early. That's still too early. You know, Rob, you and I were talking before the show started and we we're talking about it's like, I think the best optimistic guess is is probably mid to late May, probably more realistically June or July is when we're really probably more realistic. And that's if things go well, if things go well. So when they announced the Morbius move, it was no surprise. Nobody should have been surprised. We're not in a position yet that we can say, hey, in like eight weeks, we can put out Morbius and all the theaters. We just weren't in that type of a situation. And I think an April date is a little too soon. Now, the good news is they're not talking about moving No Time to Die to Christmas or to, you know, sometime into 2022. They're talking about bumping it a couple of months, probably into the fall. That to me feels a lot safer. That to me feels like a more realistic target. Again, we never know what's going to happen. Who knows? But I think it was already clear to us that April probably wasn't going to work when they moved when Morbius got moved. I think it became abundantly clear that early, early April was also not going to work. So I am at one hand, not surprised at all that they're going to be, they're moving James Bond, no time to die a little bit. And I'm also not all that upset about it. Like, again, it's just a few months. I think this is a rational move. We've already been waiting for a while. I'm willing to wait a little bit longer to get this movie. Rob, I know you, have been very, uh, had a lot of anticipation. You've been very excited for this. You hear about this move, two questions. Is it the right move for them to do right now? And how do you feel about it now being bumped off another couple of months? Well, of all the movies that are coming out, first of all, everyone knows how disappointed I would be. I mean, uh, I've never, a, a movie that would almost be pushed 18 months from its original release date at a big movie like this. But this is a film that has a reported production budget of $250 million, not even including marketing. So of all the movies coming out, it's the most expensive of these tentpole pictures, franchise pictures. It has to have a global theatrical release, really, to, to have any chance of becoming profitable. And even if like, is it true if they got $600 million, it, they could pay it off? Yes. You know, that's why they're asking for that much money from these streaming services. But they really need not just a, a theatrical release, but they need a theatrical release where all the theaters around the planet Earth are open. Not 65% or 70%. They need basically all the theaters open. And right now, they're, they're not going to get that. 
And I think they really don't have a choice. And I don't think it's a reflection on the quality of the movie. I'm sure the movie's great. Even Spectre, which I couldn't stand, made money. So I think they just, they don't, they don't have a choice. And if they only move it a couple months and we're still in the situation we're in, I bet they'll move it again. But they've got to, you know, they got to ramp up. They got a huge marketing campaign and money behind this film with product placement and partners. And I mean, I can only imagine how frustrating this has to be to the studio and to the Broccoli family, man. And I'll tell you one thing, John, I could die soon. And if I don't get to see this movie, I'm going to be <laughs> sitting down in the afterlife going, come on, God, did you have to strike me down now? Couldn't you have at least, I mean, I braved this pandemic. I didn't get a few more months to like, you know, get my bond on one last time. You know what? I remember, Rob, back in the 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 early days of the pandemic. Let's go back to March. Dude. Um, uh, actually, even like late February and or early March. And, you know, we had just found out that CinemaCon had been canceled. We had just found out that Comic-Con had been canceled and. All this kind of stuff. And I remember a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, optimistic John Campia saying, don't worry. I, I mean, everybody's going to take this seriously. We're all going to do the right thing, and we'll be back in theaters by July. Not July 2021. <laughs> I was like, we're going to be back in theaters by July. Well, the world has a way of jading your optimism a lot. So, But I think I feel like today... It's a little bit different today because I feel like we actually have something tangible that has started the countdown clock on the pandemic. I mean, now we actually have vaccinations. They're in the process. We, we do actually see a light at the end of the tunnel at yeah. this point. So it's a little bit more tangible now. I don't feel like we're just being optimistic. But, you know, Rob, I was saying, I believe, obviously, April was far too soon. I still think minimum... We're talking mid to late May, but realistically, I feel like we're talking more June or July. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it became like an August, but I feel like June, July is knowing how badly the theaters want to get open up again, how badly these studios want to get their movies out, out, out there. Where, where are you thinking is a realistic uh, goal? Not pessimistic, not overly optimistic, but where do you think is a, a fairly realistic goal when we can look at that? Yeah, movies can come out and be open in theaters in this window? When do you think that is? Well, you know, the, the pandemic, especially in this country, is raging out of control. It's the worst it's ever been. And and even with a vaccine, I, I don't see this fall. I, I would say maybe September. I mean, Biden has said that he wants, what uh, you said before the show started, was it 100 million? 100 million vaccinations 100 million in the first 100 days. In the first 100 days. I mean, that might be great, but even if people are vaccinated, are they going to go back to movie theaters? I mean, I think what's going to have to happen is once people are vaccinated, after that, it's going to be a couple more months where people are going to have to see, has this vaccination really, is it working? Are, is COVID, are they, are the rates dropping precipitously? And if they are, then people might start venturing out, but until then, I think it's going to take a while, man, even with the vaccine. Yeah. And, and by the way, there's still a lot of big ifs with the vaccine. Okay. Yeah. They're saying 100, vac 100 million vaccinations in the first 100 days. That's ambitious, though. Can they actually hit those numbers? Will it take longer than that? Will the effectiveness of the vac vaccine uh, prove out to what they're saying their lab results were? I mean, there's so many questions still in the air. But what right about now, you? What does your gut tell you? Uh, my, my gut's telling me June, July. I think the because the, there's there's a there's a balance of um, all the stuff that you accurately described with the balance of the studios, the theater industry. I mean, a lot of people just want the economy going again to get to to push it out. So I'm thinking June, July right now, but I could see it being pushed to August, September. Yeah, that's, well, that's uh, my pessimism yeah. is my overly optimistic thing is late May. My realistic goal for me is June, July. My little more pessimistic would be August, September. Um, but I certainly think, but again, that's with a lot of variables still up in the air. Will okay, I got another one. Okay. Do you think there's going to be San Diego Comic-Con this year? Oh, dude, you know what's funny? It's funny you bring that up uh, because 
you got you guys know that I do a panel at Comic Con every year called the Masters of the Web panel. They invite me there every year to do that. Um, the one of the main programming directors of all of Comic Con, uh, I was just emailing with. And I was like, well, man, here's hoping to a better 2021. Oh, <laughs> I, from what I understand, and I, I don't want to break any confidences here. Um, from what I understand, they are planning on having a San Diego comic con in July. Um, but as Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Right. So they are right now playing. I'm, oh. I you know, know what? Let me say this. Okay, I'll say this. <laughs> Having a Comic-Con is far more problematic than having an open movie theater. Yes. Because Comic-Con, if any of you guys are veterans of various c- conventions, Comic-Con, without a pandemic, every year you can expect to get the Comic-Con crud. As uh, as a lot of people describe, because I I every other year I get sick at Comic Con because you're walking through uh, this big thing of of you know hundred thousand other people shoulder to shoulder scraping by. Half of them haven't showered, half of them haven't changed their clothes since they got to San Diego, and like inevitably half the time I end up getting sick at Comic Con anyway because like you're it just becomes a petri dish. In a pandemic era, I'll say this, it will be, you can have movie theaters open and not have Comic-Con. You cannot have Comic-Con and not have movie theaters. So I, I'm a little bit more pessimistic about actually having San Diego Comic-Con this year. I'm a little more optimistic about movie theaters being open by July, but let's put it this way. I'm not saying it can't happen. But I will be surprised, delightfully surprised, if we get a live in-person San Diego Comic-Con this year. What do you th- you think? Do you think we're going to get Comic-Con this year? No. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. I, I mean, dude, I love Comic-Con. It's, it's you know, one of the highlights of my year. It has been for, I, I yes, last year would have been my 32nd Comic-Con, consecutive Comic-Con. And, and. It is a highlight of my year, and and I just I can't see it happening for the reasons you just so eloquently laid out. Yep. All right. Anyway, guys, question is, what do you think about this uh, upcoming bump for James Bond? To me, it makes common sense. Do you think they will be able to make a fall date? I feel pretty good that it can. A lot of things up in the air, though, right now. Guys, what's your opinion on this? Jump down to the comments section below and leave us your thoughts. All right, guys.